Now that will be all right if that was for me. But we're talking about the King of Kings. We're talking about the Lord of Lords. We're talking about the Lion of Judah. We're talking about our Abba Father, the one who heals, delivers, and sets us free. Amen. Give God some glory in this place today. Glory to God. Glory to God. We bless your name, Lord. We glorify you today, God. We honor you in this place. We thank you for the house we call the open heaven. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We glorify you, oh God. There's no one like you, Lord. You sit high and you look low, oh God. There's nothing too hard for you. We bless your name, oh Lord. We bless your name, oh Lord. We bless your name, oh Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He is an almighty God. He is a loving God. He is a forgiving God. He is a deliverer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give it honor to God. Give it honor to God. And to the angel of this house. Amen. My daddy, Apostle Gene Arcus. Amen. I don't take it lightly that he is allowing me to stand up here today before you to bring you a word from the Lord. Amen. So I give him honor, like my husband said, in public like I do in private. I thank God because on Friday night there was a powerful move in this house. Amen. Amen. I thank God for that move because it showed me the honor that's due to the man in this house. Apostle Elliot got on his knees and said under the anointing of Apostle Jean August I stand before you. So I declare for myself that under the anointing of Apostle Gene Arthur, I stand before you. Amen. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. Like Mother Love said, I'm not what I used to be. I don't look like what I've been through. But I can tell you, God has been good to me. He has been good to my family. He has been good to you. And we got to acknowledge God for his greatness and all that he does in our life. The Bible says in all things, give thanks. That's not just for the little things. It's not just for the big things. But it's in all things, we ought to give God thanks. So even if you only received a dollar for your paycheck, thank God. Even if you just got a loaf of bread for the week to eat, thank God. Even if you just got promoted on your job, say thank you, God. Thank him in all things. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your glory. We thank you for your grace. You said we can do nothing without you, Lord. So I stand before you asking you, right now, God, to use me in a mighty way, God. Turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 3. Apostle was talking to us this morning in his office and he started speaking about Moses. So I start smiling because that's where I'm coming from this morning. He was talking about the mindset. The mindset. And that's where I'm coming from this morning. Talking about the mindset of Moses. Amen. I'm going to be starting from verse 11. If you can read along with me, say amen. amen. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. 
And they asked me his name. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. You may be seated. Amen. So here, we are now at the point in the book of Exodus where God has just commissioned Moses to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt where they were suffering severe oppression under Pharaoh. This was after the burning bush, after he had spoke to him, after he had talked to him. He said, Moses, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to Pharaoh, and I want you to tell him, let my people go. Moses hesitated. Now we're going to go through the different emotions that Moses was experiencing. Because he worried. He was then anxious. And then he was rebellious. And then he came back and then he submitted. So in the beginning, Moses said, who am I? Moses didn't realize that he was talking to God. He had God's name in a question. So God flipped it and says, I am who I am. You tell him that's who sent you. When they hear that, they will know that I am the Lord thy God who has delivered them. Amen. So then Moses come back and say, well, what if they don't listen to me? So now he's questioning God's authority. What if they don't listen to me when I go to them and say that I spoke to you? He said, I told you. I am has sent you. So why are you afraid? Don't be afraid. I am with you. The Bible says I will never leave you nor forsake you. Moses must have forgot that scripture. Because God said he would do that for us. Amen. Amen. So now Moses is feeling inadequate to do what God has called him to do. And by ourselves, we are inadequate. By ourselves. But with God, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. So God was telling him, I'm going to be your strength when you're weak. So then Moses came back with another excuse. He said... But I am a man of lips who can't speak well. I am not eloquent in my wording. So God said, don't worry about it. I will go with you and I will speak for you. I will tell you what to say. So then Moses came back and said, God, please send somebody else. Now he's being rebellious. Amen. Send somebody else. Don't send me. So God got angry with Moses. God gets angry when he has a just reason to get angry with us. Amen. Amen. Moses had wore the patience out of God. And God had to tell him, listen, don't you have a brother named Aaron? I will send him to speak for you. Apostle said earlier, he made, he made um, Moses a God and his brother Aaron a prophet. Amen. To speak to Pharaoh what he wanted them to know. Amen. So now he's going forward into what God has commissioned him to do. But before then, he was rebellious. He was worried. And he would need a deliverance from fear. So when God said, what is that in your hand? Moses said, that's a rod. The rod was the shepherd's hook that they used to help the sheep, to steer them and guide them where they wanted to go. So God said, throw it to the ground. So he threw it to the ground and, he, and it turned into a snake. So Moses ran, showing you right there, he had a spirit of fear. He was fearful of snakes. But God was delivering Moses right then because he knew further down that he was going to send snakes to kill off some of the children of Israel while they were in the wilderness. And so if he would have sent those snakes and not delivered Moses in the beginning, Moses would have ran then. So how are you going to help somebody if you're fearful for what God is trying to get you to do. Amen. Amen. 
God will supply every resource you need. He said in his word, for those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he glorified. Amen. He will give you everything you need to do what he's asking you to do. Amen. So we're talking about the mindset of Moses. A mindset is a collection of thoughts and beliefs that shape your habits, affect how you think, feel, and what you do. So a lot of times we go about on our emotions. Man is made of three parts, the body, the spirit, and the soul. The soul is the mind, the will, and emotions. The body relates to the world, and the spirit relates to God. So Moses was in his emotions when God called him to do what he needed to do. Because for one, he was worrying. Two, he was rebellious. Three, he didn't. He thought he was inadequate. He had lack of confidence. He had low self-esteem in the beginning. So God was trying to get him delivered before he can go and deliver somebody else. Amen. Amen. The Bible says the sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart. God got to break us sometimes to get us to be where we need to be. To get us to our purpose, our destiny, and our future. So he will have to crush you like Apostle says to get to use you where you need to be. Amen. So David said in Psalm 42, my soul. Why is my soul so broken and contrite? Why is it heavy within me? Even David had issues with his soul and his emotions. And he had to release that and ask God, why within me is my soul so broken? And that's what's wrong with us. Our souls are hurt. Our souls are broken, but we need deliverance from our mindset because our mind is what controls the soul. Amen. So when we surrender our will and our thoughts to Jesus, God can deliver us. Amen. 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 Sometimes we have to just say, God, I surrender all. Y'all remember that song? I surrender all. We just got to surrender it and give it to him so he can take it, he can deliver us, and then he can use us. Amen. So God delivered Moses from his fear when he turned the rod into a snake. But Moses still was focusing on his weakness, on him not being able to speak eloquently. Amen. So God compromised with him. Compromise and said, okay, I'm going to send your brother Aaron this time. But next time you need to do what I'm asking you to do. Amen. So God created us in his image. Image, which means we are perfect in every way. In spite of our discrepancies, in spite of what our illnesses are, in spite of what our shortcomings are, God can still use us in the place where we are. We can stutter like Moses and he can still make you get up here and preach the word of God. Amen. We can be angry like Peter and have that fighting spirit and still get up and be able to preach the word of God with the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I got a testimony myself. I got a fighting spirit myself. I'm like Peter. Sometimes I just got my dukes up for no reason. Amen. I'm like the movie Color Purple. All my life, I had to fight. I had to fight my mama, my daddy, my sister, and my brother. But I thank God he's still working on me with that. Amen. He's still delivering me from the spirit of anger. Amen. I'm working on it, y'all. I'm working on it, and he's working on me. I'm not going to be like Oprah all my life fighting. I'm tired of fighting. Ain't you tired of fighting? It's a mindset. It's what I was telling myself. People trying to hurt me. People trying to abuse me. People using me. It's what I was telling myself that I need to correct. Amen. A lot of us need to change what we tell ourselves so God can use us. And that's what he was doing with Moses. Change what you're saying about yourself. Change who you are. I created you. I know who you are. I know what you need. Amen. So when he asked God to send someone else. He was rebellious. He was being rebellious. How often do we tell God, send somebody else? I don't want to do what you called me to do. I don't want to go over there and apologize to that person. I don't want to go and tell that person I'm sorry, I love you, when they told me they hate me. That's not easy to do. It's a mindset. We got to change our mind and have the mind of Christ in us and not our own mind. I thank God that he's a big God. 
that we don't have his mind. He said his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. Amen. 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 So God became angry. God is not angry by nature, but it only lasts for a short while. So we can glorify him that even when he gets angry at us, that it doesn't last always. Joy comes in the morning. Amen. Amen. There's a song called Exodus. Deliver me from me. And that song has been ministering to me for the last month or so. And Minister Valerie prayed it for me this morning so I can calm my nerves before I got up here. Amen. Because that song says, deliver me from my overthinking. Deliver me from doing things I know I'm not supposed to do. Deliver me from the wrong mindset of thinking things about people. Thinking people are talking about me. Talking about other people. Gossiping. Deliver me. Whatever you need to be delivered from. All you got to do is pray and ask God. And he will do it for you. Amen. He's doing it for me right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Deliver me from myself. Sometimes we think we're too high and mighty and we're too good for God to deliver us from some things that we know is not right. But today I come to tell you, you are a child of God. There's nothing too hard for him to deliver you from. Amen. Amen. Just ask and you will find. Seek and the door should be open. Knock and the door should be open. Amen. Amen. Then we come to the children of Israel. Their mindset. They were a group. They were a mass of people with the same mindset. Amen. They all thought the same. They all did the same thing because they were under the oppression of Pharaoh. Amen. So they had what I call a spirit of institutionalism. Like they've been in jail. They've been institutionalized. So they came out of a situation but we're still in the situation, amen? Being institutionalized, you are established as a part of a culture, a social system, or an organization. In this case, they were in the social system of Pharaoh. So he had them doing some things. He had them making bricks for no straw. He had to work harder and harder after Moses went to him and told him, let my people go. He got upset and he told the keepers, he said, make them work harder. Make them go get their own straw to make bricks. He made it hard for them so bad that they was ready to stone Moses. Moses then got angry. How about that, huh? God got mad with Moses. Then Moses got mad with the people. Said, God, why you send me to these people? They ready to stone me. Amen. So it trickled down what God was trying to do. My God. He said, why did you send me to these people? He said, you know, sometimes we go into a situation Thinking is okay. Y'all know the saying, grass is green on the other side. But when you flip it over, it's still brown, right? It's still right and it's still weeping. They thought they had it better on the other side. They start complaining about not having food, not having water, not having anything they had when they were over there in Egypt. They thought, why didn't you just leave us to die there? Did you bring us here because there was no graves over there in Egypt? So they were just complaining. They too needed deliverance. They needed deliverance from their mindset, from the spirit of complaining, from the spirit of anger. They too needed deliverance from some things in their life, just like we do. Amen. So when they had that institutionalized mindset, they took it up against Moses and Aaron instead of realizing that God was trying to do something in their life. He was trying to deliver them from some things so that he can get the glory out of all of it. The whole process of him delivering the people, the children of Israel, so he can get the glory. And that's just like us. You know, they were a big church. The church complaining. Complaining, complaining, complaining about everything. Didn't get their way. Didn't get what they want. So that's like us sometimes. When apostle gives us an order, he tells us to do something, we start complaining. We don't want to do it. We don't want to hear what he got to say. We don't want to hear what God has given him for this house. But we too need uh, deliverance from that spirit of uh, entitlement. Because some of us feel like we're entitled to certain things. We're supposed to get certain things. Like our children. They feel like they're entitled to have money. They're entitled to have games. They're entitled to live in your house. But they don't pay no bills. They don't pay no bills. They don't do nothing. 
So I'm entitled to beat your behind because the Bible says if you beat a child, they will not die. Amen. They will not die. Beat your children. They will not die. Teach them a lesson. Amen. It comes across a time where you just got to be firm with them. And that's how God is with us. He's firm, but he's loving. He will always give us a hug, even after he spank us, right? He'll give us a hug. Amen. Amen. My God, he is a good God. He's a good God. The mind of the children of Israel was so distorted that God couldn't use them. He had to kill them off. He had to let them die in the wilderness and wait for the new generation to come in before anything could happen. Amen. They were so disobedient. They were so rebellious that he could do nothing with them. He just got angry. So he sent the venomous snakes in to kill some of them. And they cried out to Moses and said, pray to God and ask him to remove the snakes. So Moses, again, we talked about the snakes. No longer fear for the snakes. Built a pole with a snake on it. A golden pole with a golden snake on it. So that when they looked at it, they will be saved. Amen. So that's what God will do for us. He will give us somebody like Apostle August so that he can come to us and we can go to him and he can pray for us and we will be saved. Our souls will be saved. The Bible says the man who saves souls is wise. Amen. Amen. So we're supposed to be saving souls. We're not just supposed to come in here and save souls. These souls are already saved. Who are we saving on the outside? Amen. Who are we bringing in here so their souls can be saved? Apostle said, bring them in. Let him clean up the fish. Amen. We just compel them to come in here. Our job is not to scrape the scales off of them, not to break them down and worry about where they come from, but to bring them into the house where God can clean them up. Amen. And that's what he was doing for the children of Israel. Amen. So they needed deliverance from disobedience, anger, doubt, and rebellion, and especially the spirit of complaining. Now let me tell you something. I got a, I got a confession. I complain sometimes. I complain, but the Bible says, why do you worry about your life? Look at the birds of the air. They don't store in barns, but I still take care of them. Don't he take care of them? So I know if he's going to take it a bird, he said, how much more greater are you than that? So I know he's going to take care of you and he's going to take care of me. Amen. God has a good word. This word is good. This Bible is good. It's like Apostle corrected us this morning. He said, the Bible is not the basic instructions before leaving Christ, leaving earth. Y'all stop saying that. Right. Y'all stop saying it. it. It's the word. It's the word of truth. The Bible says, rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for his word. We thank him for his word. Amen. So there's a movie, speaking of mindset, called Shawshank Redemption. I don't know if y'all remember that. Yeah. Morgan Freeman played a character called Red. He was yeah. incarcerated for a very, very long time. So then when he got out, he got a job, and he went to this job every day. And every day he would ask the boss, restroom break boss, restroom break boss. He had the institutionalized mindset so much that the boss got irritated with him. He said, look, don't ask me no more, just go. Just go, and that's what God told Moses, just go, I'm gonna be with you. I'm going to be with you. Do what I ask you to do. He told Abraham, just go to the land that I'm sending you. Just go. God wants us to go. He wants us to move. He wants us to go forward. He wants us to be delivered. Tell yourself, I'm delivered. I'm delivered. I'm delivered. I'm delivered. I'm delivered. I'm delivered. Whatever you need to be delivered from, know that you are delivered today in the name of Jesus. So Peter needs deliverance from the spite fighting spirit like me. The fighting spirit that got my dukes up. My husband told me the other day, there you go with your dukes up. There you go again. I said, I know I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You got to remind me when those times come up. Sometimes it just happens. You know, it catch up on you so quick. It's just like, whoo, I'm going to get through it. Thomas needed deliverance from doubt. Oh, doubting Thomas. He wouldn't believe that Jesus came back until he saw the hands, until the feet. He, didn't, he needed to see the holes, amen? Judas needed deliverance from greed. He was money hungry, amen? Some of us are money hungry, right? But the Bible says the money is the root of all evil, amen? So we got to be careful how we feel about money, amen? Saul needed deliverance from self-righteousness. 
Self-righteous. He thought what he was doing was right. He thought going out and killing Christians was the right thing to do. But that wasn't right. He needed to be delivered. So God had to knock him down off the horse and blind him to get him back in line. Amen. So sometimes God would do that for us. He will knock us off of where we are. He will bring us down, blind us naturally so that we can come back into alignment with him. Amen. So we thank God for deliverance today. We thank God that he's using us in a mighty way. Even though we feel inadequate at our jobs, maybe as a wife, as a husband, as a teacher, as a mother, whatever we feel inadequate at, God can fix that for us. He can deliver us from that mindset of not being able to do what we are called to do. Amen. If you're called to be a mother, be a mother. If you're called to be a wife, be the best wife you can be. He said, be the help me to your husband. If you're called to do a, a, a position on your job where you're elevated, do the best you can at that position. God will give you provisions for everything you need. He said, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. There, there's no condemnation. Amen. So we thank God that he is a deliverer. He is a healer. He is a way maker. He is my sustainer. I said mine because I take it personal. He has been sustaining me. Amen. He's changing my mind on a lot of things. You know, God, he is so great. The enemy tried to take me out a couple years ago. He was speaking to my mind, telling me, you're not worthy. You aren't worthy of a husband. You don't need your kids. Go and kill yourself. Go and kill yourself. So guess what I did? I took a whole bunch of pills. And I tried to do it. And then I laid down beside my husband like it was okay. Just hoping they would find me in the morning. Amen. I needed deliverance from that mindset of inadequacy. Of thinking I wasn't good enough. Amen. Thinking I couldn't make it. Thinking we wasn't going to make it through our trials and tribulations. But God would send you into the wilderness. He'll bring you out with a testimony. Won't he do it? Amen. Yes, he will. He'll do it. Yes, he will. He'll do it. So I thank God that what the enemy once did, God will not let him take you out. What God wants to lie, the enemy cannot kill. Amen. He will use you for a living testimony. He will deliver you just so he can get the glory. And in my instance, he gets every bit of glory in my life. He gets every bit of praise in my life for all that he's doing, not only in me, but in my children and my husband and in all of you. Amen. So I thank God for who he is because he is a way maker. He is our deliverer. He is our will in the middle of a will. Amen. I thank God for y'all this morning. I give God the glory for allowing me to stand here under the anointing of my father, Apostle August. Amen. I'm going to turn it back over to our pastor, Pastor Hunt.